Here's my question. Is there any way that Palestinian people can be free without defeating, destroying, and dismantling U.S. imperialism economically, politically, and its massive military installation? Is it, I'm a revolutionary. That's Thank what you. I think needs to be done. Thank you for your question. And uh, you have a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> You can put your pressure in your government not to be in the side of the criminal, to be with the victim. Uh, you can buy good the Israeli product. For example, Rasmi is here because. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, and every, everyone can do something for, for him for her issue. Uh, Stephen has a problem uh, here and he wants your, your support and your pressure to do something to end this uh, injustice uh, on, on your, in your law. It's not in my law. Because I have the law. The occupation occupied everything. End everything for us. Part of the reason that uh Stephen Salaita was uh, attacked in the manner that he has been attacked is because of because he has been a, a leading voice, a courageous voice in calling for the uh, boycott of Israeli academic institutions that are complicit in Israel's crime. So uh, these attacks will continue, but they will be much harder when that movement is even stronger than it is now. And it's the growth of this movement, the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement more generally, that is causing this counterattack and backlash to get more vicious. So get involved in that movement. That's not just solidarity with Palestine, but it's also a form of collective self-defense here in this country. I just, I'm just i glad that Bassem mentioned Rasmiya Ode, who's here. Uh, with us tonight, Rasmiya Aude is a, a, an important leader in the Palestinian American community here in Chicago, who is herself under attack on trumped up charges, an indictment by the uh, US government on uh, bogus uh, immigration fraud charges, uh, because she allegedly concealed something that was not concealed to anyone in the world. The fact that Rasmiya Aude was brutally tortured and sexually assaulted, she's spoken about this with great courage previously, by the Israeli occupation, jailed for 10 years. And she, basically the US government wants to retry her on bogus Israeli charges. Why is the United States government putting on trial a woman who was under occupation, a woman who was tortured, a woman who was sexually assaulted instead of those who committed those crimes against her. My name is uh, Brian. I'm with a socialist group called the Spartacist League. And first of all, I'd like to say we defend uh, Professor Saleta. We have uh, defended uh, Razmiya Ode. However, I would like to open up a debate on uh, boycotts, uh, divestment, and sanctions because uh, we don't support uh, BDS as a uh, strategy. Uh, that is, uh, we're for mobilizing the power of the working class in defense of the Palestinians, not for pressuring capitalist institutions to become more morally pure. That is, uh, how are you going to make uh, the U.S. government, which um, contributes uh, $3 billion a year to uh, 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 Israel, morally pure? I'm interested in, in the gentleman's comment about... Um um, BDS, and, and I think that BDS is a tactic or, or a strategy or, or a movement or the, the, the various ways um, which it can be classified um, needs to, to be subjected to, um, I think, constant and, and intense scrutiny as to its strategies, um, as to its desired outcomes. But I think at, at a basic level, um, I, I don't agree with the with with some of the characterizations of it, um, you know, uh, it, it definitely has had and, and continues to have. Which isn't to say that it couldn't do better, 
a, 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 a working class paradigm, the, the Block the Boat initiative, which was a BDS initiative, for example, was, um, was, was workers, ship workers, dock workers, uh, taking an action to uh, prevent um, Israeli cargo from, from docking and being unloaded in, in the Bay Area. And it's an ongoing initiative. Um, you know, so there's, there's been, there's been a, a, a lot of, of interaction with, uh, with labor and labor communities. Um, not to say that those uh, relationships couldn't uh, become stronger. Um, and also, and I don't like to overlook the, the, the fact that BDS um, is, a, is, is a call from Palestine, from Palestinian civil society, and, and, and those, I, I, I'm, I'm a organizing committee member for um, US ACME, which is the US branch of the academic and cultural boycott. And, there's a, and, and the Arabic language one in Palestine, which is called uh, simply uh, PACBI, the Palestinian Academic and Cultural Boycott of, of Israel. And U.S. ACBI doesn't actually, uh, I don't know how to say it, it's, it's, it's a very sort of anarchic structure, and I say anarchic in a good way. Um, it, it's not hierarchical, but um, we, don't, we don't sort of set policies. The folks on the organizing committee and on the boards of, of PACBI do that, and so we're very much attuned to the types of strategies, right, um, that, that that our Palestinian brethren in Palestine are calling for, and so I, I think it's important just to, to keep in mind that those of us who are doing BDS here, here in North America are, are, are in many ways um, sort of uh, responding to an appeal from our brothers and sisters in, in Palestine. Um, and then finally, I don't I mean, I think it's an interesting uh, sort of take on the idea that, that uh, BDS wants to uh, sort of uh, reform, you know, uh, various corporate entities. But, um, but I don't see I don't see BDS as, as reformist. Um, I, I see it as rejectionist. You know, I, I don't think that it necessarily sets out. And cases can differ, but I don't think it necessarily sets out to uh, you know to to reform corrupt institutions, right? I don't think that in most cases it, it, it proffers a solution or a particular set of solutions to corrupt institutions. It simply asks us to reject them. It simply asks us not to engage in them. It simply says that, that, that we will not be complicit in either direct ways or indirect ways with the forms of, of oppression in Palestine that this particular institution is, is supporting. The main target, by the way, of, of BDS, the ultimate target of BDS, is the, um, is the Israeli government, right? It's the Israeli government. Uh, anybody who has a formal relationship with the Israeli government can be, and often is, uh, uh, a, a, a target of, 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 of BDS activists. And when it comes to the Israeli government, uh, I see very little, if any at all, strands of, of reformist thought among BDS activists, right? And a, and a lot stronger strands of, of rejectionist thought. But that, that, those are sort of my observations on, on the, the, you know, on the question of labor and BDS and, and these sorts of things. Uh, BDS is very important. And it's part of the moral struggle. Part of the general struggle to end the general problem, it's the occupation. But it's not a goal for itself. We need it as a part of the component of the struggle against the occupation and to end the Palestinian suffering and the Palestinian issue. My question is for all of you, how do you feel about um, groups here in the U.S. and internationally who advocate and fight rigorously for a solution that grants full rights and self-determination for both peoples living in the region? And what political solution do you imagine in the future besides peace, sort of more of a specific outlook for the future. The question about uh, what the solution is, I endorse everything Bessie just said. I'll only add that, uh, you, that Zionism is the very contradiction of self-determination. It's the denial of self-determination to the Palestinian people. It's a racial project. It's a colonial project. And uh, this is why there's such a backlash to criticism of it, because it's so out of tune with the ethos of the 21st century, where we strive towards, we don't achieve 
yet that we strive towards equality and the full value of all human beings. So any political solution, whether in one state or two states or ten, will dismantle all forms of racial privilege, ethno-religious privilege. It will abolish the racist laws like the so-called law of return, which keeps Palestinians uh, caged up in the Gaza ghetto for one reason and one reason alone, that they're not Jewish, which keeps Palestinians in a, a, a horrible exile in Syria, in Lebanon, uh, around the world, for one reason alone, but they're not Jewish. A solution will bring Palestinians and Jewish people back together, something that Zionism has always sought to prevent. Yeah.